Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Saturday sort of afternoon here in Australia and the markets are up again, so still pumping over the weekend. Be interesting to see if there's any CME gap created this weekend and if so, will it get filled sometime over the weekend or early during the week? But overall, 2.12 trillion, nice. Very, very nice. Hopefully we can stay above the $2 trillion mark, but chances are we'll probably come back down uh, in the not too distant future. Again, if any CME gaps are created, and we'll have a look at that possibly tomorrow. 43% uh, and risen just a little bit Bitcoin dominance. Look, Bitcoin could be getting run to getting ready to go on a run, particularly if it can break that $52,000 mark, it could really start to run hard. We'll have to wait and see. Volume's up, which is nice. Again, price is under the 49,000. We got up into the 49s, getting close to 50, but not quite. And gas prices coming down. Good Lord, how's that? Things are pumping and gas prices are coming down. Seems like EIP 1559 may have done the trick. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, at least they're not in the, you know, hundreds of dollars, which we saw them uh, not that long ago. Probably six months ago, they were around about that price. All right, as we can see, 24-hour change, look a nice seven-day, uh, one month and three month. Most things are up. But funnily enough, Dogecoin is down over three months. So if you're a Dogecoin fan, could be something to look at. But again, things are looking pretty sweet. All right, what's done the best, though, in the last 24 hours? Because that's what we generally focus on. All right, best performer, XE Cash, 57%. Wow, look out. Bitcoin Cash, 50%. AVAX, got a bit of a story coming about, uh, coming up about that. So they're doing quite well, 33%. Bitcoin Gold, XFIN, SafeMoon, still <laughs> that uh, two number right there. So it was a 0.000002 of a cent. Uh, but they are up 11%, but they are still way down uh, considering where they once were. So we'll see how they go. Solana doing nice, 10%. Telcoin, Flow, Polkadot, Matic. Look, a number of coins doing extremely well. Has anything not done so well, though? We've got any little outliers? Audius, again, pumped up so much. Same with Voyager. Both of these tokens had massive runs. I mean, look at that. 90%, 200%, 164%, 48%. So it's to be expected that they're going to have a pullback. There's always, you know, outliers. While other coins are pumping, some are having a bit of a correction on a pullback. So, you know, same with the graph, Cosmos. But look, no real major losses. Again, I don't think anyone's complaining about a sort of 6% loss if they're up, you know, 164% in three months, even 87% in the last three days. Losing 6% for a bit of a correction, healthy and completely understandable. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. It has broken back into that box again. So we came down, bounced off here perfectly, and now here we are up back in this upwards trending channel. And like I said, the scary thing is the upside as if as of tomorrow basically is almost a hundred thousand. Now again I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to a hundred thousand tomorrow, but if it you know continues to trade in this channel, we have seen it a number of times right up in the top parts of this channel. Right up in the top parts, even breaching out above. So that is what I think could definitely happen. Again, not tomorrow. I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to $97,000 tomorrow, but it is definitely looking pretty strong at the moment and back in this upwards trending channel. So I'll have to extend this out for tomorrow's and we'll see uh, if it's going to start here or will it start a new movement that goes even higher? Are we going into like a parabolic stage? I mean, this looked pretty strong. This looked pretty strong. Now we're getting into a bit of choppiness here. But the good thing is we are staying above the 200-day moving average. We have, you know, flirted with it. We're above it. We're below it. We're above it. We're below it. Now we're above it. So we could easily go back down below again. Like I said, we still could roll over and come down and see another low before we see another high. Or this could be just a fake out and we literally go into a bear market. Lots of people... Uh, have been saying that and not so many are saying it at the moment but there definitely are and again look the truth is i don't know exactly what's going to happen i'm only going off my gut feeling and after being in the space for sort of four years i think we are going to make a new high but again this is really the key here we've got to break that fifty-two thousand dollar level now again we probably will come back 
uh, and close any CME gaps that are covered uh, Monday, or that might actually be done sort of tomorrow, uh, Australian time. That's usually when it happens. If it doesn't happen first thing, sort of Monday morning. So just something to consider. So if you're looking at buying, maybe, and again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. I haven't done my DCA at the moment because it's been pumping. I'm waiting for a correction hoping for a correction. I don't think it's going to be that big, but I think we'll probably come back down somewhere around sort of the $46,000 level within the next 24 to 48 hours. It might just be a wick, but that could be a, not a bad place to set your sort of buy orders around here. So 46,000 sort of 700-ish. Again, no chance it'll come down right there. It might only come down to sort of around about here. But look, anything under forty-eight sort of thousand dollars would be considered a reasonably good sort of buy price at the moment but that's not to say it's the best buy price i just think the cme gap that's likely being created right now will be closed at some stage so if you're sort of dcaing just set your buys for a little bit above sort of 48 uh, 40 uh, under forty eight thousand. so you know forty seven thousand five hundred might not be a bad spot but again it definitely could come lower all right let's move on to the stories so a Missouri mayor, or not a Missouri mayor, the Missouri mayor plans to give $1,000 of Bitcoin to every inhabitant of Missouri. Now he, has do, he does have one condition about doing that. Look, I love this condition. I think this is real forward thinking from uh, this politician. So Stewart's Bitcoin plan comes with a catch. The recipients would not be able to sell the BTC for five years which the mayor says would prevent the residents from having regrets when the price of Bitcoin possibly becomes half a million dollars. This, I love this. This is forcing a saving plan on people. And that's what I love. Not only should I, do I think that they should do something like this, I think there should be some kind of pool set up where they can all earn some interest on it. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, Bitcoin's going to earn interest all by itself. And, you know, there's, you know, risks around doing that. But I, I love this idea. I think everyone should have some part of any wages that they make put into a savings plan that kind of forces them to save a little bit. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. I know some people are on very little money and they can't really afford to save. But even if it was just the tiniest little bit of Bitcoin, you know, $5 worth of Bitcoin a fortnight or whatever it is, goes, you know, gets put away from them, put away for them and in some interest bearing uh, kind of account that, you know, governments could possibly set up or, you know, go through things like Celsius and BlockFi and that. I love this idea because we need a generation of sort of savers to be doing that because we, there's no point in saving at the moment with cash. It just doesn't work. Like it gets absolutely hammered unless you're making 8% or something like that from Aave or, you know, these other places cash is just becoming worth less and less bitcoin on the other hand we should be saving this because the price just continues to go up so imagine a thousand dollars now at bitcoin that's under fifty thousand and it goes to half a million that's a 10x you're turning people's you know one thousand dollars possibly into ten thousand dollars and there's plenty of people that probably would never think that they would have ten thousand dollars ever in their life so for the people who are in missouri this could be really really good but again we'll have to wait and see but this is the kind of forward thinking that we need from you know our leaders our governments and things like that you know i don't like to ever enforce anything on anyone but I think forcing people to save a little bit of money in circumstances and, you know, not so much cash money because the dollar, unfortunately, is not doing so great. If that changes in the future, then sweet, you know, we can start to save dollars. But dollars have been going down for as long as I can remember. The scary thing is I remember interest rates of, you know, 17, 18% when I was really young. My parents were getting things like that. You can put your dollars in the bank and get 17, 18% return on your dollar, but it's just constantly gone down since then. And now, yeah, it's basically not even a percent you can get on your dollar. So it's not worth holding. Bitcoin, on the other hand, I mean, it's doing that hand over fist. Bitcoin, on average, I think is going up 200% every year. Now, there is a year where it goes down and it's brutal, but outside of that year where it goes down, every other year it's doing on average 200 percent uh increase on the price of where it was so yeah i think lots of places should be looking at adopting something like this i think this is very very yeah this is intelligence 
right there, ladies and gentlemen. This is someone who's thinking because unfortunately there's a lot of people out there who are really bad with money and things like that. And to just give them the Bitcoin, don't get me wrong, great gesture by the mayor and, you know, the... I don't know, the government of Missouri, I don't know what they are, local councils or that over there. This is a great gesture, but it would be a waste, uh, you know, if you just gave it to them and unfortunately it then got, you know, spent on drugs or alcohol and whatever, you know, a sort of forced saving plan over five years. So at least in five years' time they can see, you know, the value of Bitcoin and how it really works. I love this idea. All right, Australian police forces... A police force, not forces, I think it was the Victorian police, sees a record $6 million worth of Bitcoin from the dark web. <whistles> All right, so there was a bit of a ring going on there, a criminal syndicate, and they were using cryptocurrencies. And this is, you know, not unheard of. And this is, you know, what lots of people will jump onto, unfortunately, to FUD, you know, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in general. They'll say, see, it's being used for crime and this and that. And yeah. Absolutely it is, but nowhere near the amount of uh, Bitcoin has been used in crimes as cash. Cash is the one that they prefer to use. Bitcoin is a whole lot harder. And again, there's a there's a, tra a trace on there. Like The blockchain shows you where all this money has gone. And unless they're putting it through, you know, some of these, uh, you know, tornado cash and things like that, uh, washing machines. And even then, they can still be traced sometimes. So, you know. Sad for cryptocurrencies that more stories like this are coming out, but we need to just take it in perspective that it's a very small, minute amount of people that are using cryptocurrencies for this kind of stuff because it's, it's hard to hide it, whereas cash, it's a whole lot easier. All right, BlockFi coming out, and they are sponsoring uh, a player. So NBA star Cade Cunningham partners with Bl excuse me, BlockFi, and he's going to receive his bonuses in Bitcoin. I mean, there's so many, you know, stars coming out and even teams now coming out that are having this. They're getting paid their bonuses in Bitcoin or some other kind of cryptocurrency. That mainstream adoption, it definitely is happening. We're not, we're still not there yet. And look, we might be another cycle or two away from, you know, true mainstream adoption. We're basically, you know, the almost the entire world is into cryptocurrency but you can see that it's coming you are in the right space at the right time in my personal opinion again never financial advice but i think if you're in cryptocurrencies now you know even if you've only got a couple of hundred dollars or fifty dollars or whatever it is it's going to make you know i'll be careful how i say life-changing money fifty dollars is probably not going to you know be worth that much in 10 years time that it's going to change your life unless you're from maybe a developing nation or something like that and you know fifty dollars to them is worth a whole lot more to us but what i can say is based on history whatever you have uh, in cryptocurrencies now in five to ten years is going to be worth an awful lot more than what it is now as long as you're not in some shit coin that goes to zero unfortunately and that's just the truth but really mo oh no i won't say most because that's not true because there's thousands of cryptocurrencies you know the good ones that have been around for a while with good teams and you know have new innovative tech that disrupts they just continue to go up every single year they become worth more and more and more and at the peak of their cycles they are worth substantially more so very smart from BlockFi uh, and very smart from Cade Cunningham as well based on, you know, the performance of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, you know, being the most stable and the granddaddy of them all. That, you know, adoption is definitely happening. It's just maybe not as fast as some people would like, but for other people, it's probably quite fast as well. All right, BitConnect, it has finally caught up with them. So SEC obtains judgment for 12 million against BitConnect BitConnect promoters and that was the ones in the usa so the defendants and a relief defendant have been ordered to collectively pay more than 3.5 million in cash that's you know like yep fair enough but 190 bitcoin in uh disaugment and prejudgment interest so the 190 bitcoin wow that is that's a lot of bitcoin and what the sad part is is that if they have 190 bitcoin my guess is they've probably earned a ton of interest and done a ton of other stuff on it. So while they may be losing a lot of Bitcoin and $3.5 million, I'm going to say they're probably going to walk out of it not too bad in the end. I'll have stuff stashed on the side that, you know, the SEC hasn't been able to catch up with. But 
yeah, even I got sucked into this. I put a few dollars into BitConnect and, you know, I was one of the real unlucky ones. Well, I wouldn't say I'm one of the real unlucky ones because they didn't put that much in. But I got in right at the end. I'm, I never got a cent out of BitConnect. You know, I think I put in two, three, four hundred dollars or something like that and it was gone very, very quickly. I got nothing out. I wasn't able to get a single cent back out. So, yeah, these are the kind of things where, again, we need regulation and things like that. So these kind of, you know, platforms, yeah, they are out of the market. They are ousted quite quickly. And, you know, whoever promotes them and builds them and all the rest of it, uh, yeah, they see their day before court. I mean, we're talking, you know, depending on what kind of promoters. Some people are innocent promoters. There was tons of people promoting BitConnect back in the day and they had no idea what was going on. But these big, you know, the ones at the top of the pyramid, because that's what it was, it was a pyramid scheme, they knew exactly what was going on and they absolutely should have to uh, pay a price. But I'm going to say out of that $12 million against BitConnect, I won't see any money back and most of the people that got involved won't see any money either. It'll simply be the regulatory uh, governing bodies that will, you know, see this money and, you know, good for them, sad for us, I suppose. All right. How many Bitcoin ETFs and Bitcoin futures ETFs are out there now? I don't think half of us would know. And this story says that maybe even the uh, SEC doesn't know. So SEC Chairman Gary Gensler this month suggested a Bitcoin futures ETF would have an easier time getting approved than a regular Bitcoin ETF. Oh, I don't know about that. So enough investment firms have filed applications with the Securities uh, and Exchange Commission for cryptocurrency ETFs that the public and maybe even the agency have likely lost count. I know I have. I mean, there's Van Eck, Valkyrie. I mean, you name it. There's been so many different ones. Skybridge. You know, I literally can't name them all. You would think at some stage, one of these is going to have to get up. Whether it's going to be a Bitcoin futures one or whether it's going to be an actual Bitcoin ETF, which it sounds like Gary Gens is not overly that keen on, you know, that's the million dollar question. But I would say we probably all have lost track of just how many have been applied for and not one of them has been approved yet, but they've been approved in uh, Canada, other places around the world. I think Australia's got one going. You would have to think the Americans are going to get onto one sooner rather than later. But, you know, we'll wait and see. All right, Polygon. So again, we brought the news that they're, you know, got our uh, Hermes, that they're getting a new governance token and all that going, and it looks like things could be setting up for a really bullish move. Nothing's ever guaranteed in life, and it could absolutely turn bearish, but Polygon eyes record high as Matic's 150% price rally activates tech book, bullish textbook bullish pattern so the bullish pattern is here the matic token which is polygon three-day chart shows the pair for, uh, forming an inverse head and shoulders pattern so we can see here so it looks like it could be ready to getting ready to break up and go high but there is the possibility that it doesn't play out and then it goes down so if you're looking to get in matic Maybe, you know, hold off and see if you can get down to around $1.35. I wouldn't be trying to buy right at $1.35. I'd probably be buying a little bit higher because sometimes they don't come right down. But it could also go a lot lower. So I'm never offering you financial advice. But if I was looking to get some more Matic, I'd probably wait and see if it uh, breaks down and then be looking around that $1.35 mark. But they were saying uh, $1.51 support. All right, where is Matic? Let's have a look. Where is Polygon right now? Have I gone too far? Oop. Well, there we go. It's above it. It's a dollar sixty at the moment. Now, whether that lasts or not, we'll have to wait and see. So things are looking pretty good for Polygon. And again, one of my best investments. I think my biggest gainer is Ada. By far, I was lucky enough to pick some up at three cents. I wish I had bought more at three cents, but my average sort of buy-in price for ADA was between three cents and eight cents. I've definitely bought more since, but uh, my sort of, you know, the bulk of it was bought back there. I haven't bought a whole lot uh, going on from there, but I definitely have bought some. All right, we know Avalanche has been pumping, and here's probably the three, wise and three reasons why the price is up. 
200% this month. Now, I don't own any Avalanche. I don't have any plans to buy any at the moment. Uh, maybe on a dip, but you know you can't have everything. There's always going to be things pumping that you don't have, and you don't want it to be just trying to chase everyone chase uh, things all the time so we spoke about this the other day so avalanche rush have disp- have expanded into the DeFi ecosystem with 180 million liquidity mining incentives that have gone out to Aave uh, and curve finance so that's part of the reason also they have built a bridge an ethereum bridge so the release of the avalanche bridge uh, on july 29th means you can swap assets from ethereum to uh, avax and vice versa avax back to ethereum and the last one is look i think a lot of companies are going to jump on board with this you know Ethereum is the standard and everyone's basically trying to copy it. So transaction burning improves AVAX tokenomics. So they also have a, th- uh, a system where they burn X amount of uh, coins when fees are uh, being transacted. Exactly what Ethereum's done with uh, EIP-1559 and you know, expect everyone to sort of copy <laughs> uh, Ethereum until something better comes along. And at some stage, something probably will just... You know whether it's going to be you know in the next sort of year or two or whether it might you know be another you know 10 20 30 40 50 plus years away we'll have to wait and see but ethereum is the standard you know i do not like i'm sorry it's not that i don't like i don't own any avalanche i don't own any solana it would have been nice to get on board and you know get those pumps but yeah there's only so much time in the day you have to be researching stuff and only so much money you have to be trying to chase everything Find the projects you like, you know, support the other projects that do well. And if they you know, do really well, then, you know, consider buying some, not when they're pumping up massively. But, you know, AVAX, very new. Solana, uh, still pretty new. Ethereum is the standard, been around for a while, hence why I have a bigger position in Ethereum than anything else. Didn't start that way. I had the biggest position in Bitcoin, but Ethereum has just, you know, outperformed uh most coin most coins and the other ones that have outperformed ethereum they were very small positions that you know it was going to take a miracle for them to you know, take over my uh bitcoin and ethereum position all right that's it for me stay safe be kind to one another should all be on that gain train at the moment and i'll see you next time